Happy New Year to every single one of you. Um, welcome family, friends to a new year 2021. What a year, what a start um, and also not maybe the exact start we wanted but you know what we still are serving the same God and I want to encourage you that we pick up our hearts and we look into this year with anticipation that the God that we serve, the Bible says, all things work for the good for those who love God. And I know that you love Jesus and things are going to work out just fine. So we are starting our new annual fast, uh, prayer and fast series, part of our global family that's called Awesome God. And we're going to be preaching over the next four to six weeks in all our different congregations about this awesome God. There's no greater timing and no greater season, you know, to preach about this awesome God. And we put our eyes on who God is. And if you go throughout history, church history, and you look back in over the Old Testament and the New Testament, you'll find that the nation of Israel and the people of God has gone through so many different diverse, um, you know, experiences, seasons um, from being captive in Egypt right through to, you know, all kinds of different trials and tribulations they went through. And in the midst of it all, there was an awesome God. And I pray that as we preach, that your hearts will be lifted up, that you would be encouraged and that you would put your eyes on this awesome God. Can you just open up your hearts as we open up this new series and pray together. Father, we thank you for this incredible 2021. As we as your people bow before you, we put our eyes on you. We put our expectation on you. And that we know that you are a faithful God. You've been faithful throughout history. You are faithful in 20, you were faithful in 2020. You will be faithful in 2021. And Lord, together as we put our eyes and our fix our eyes, we fix our eyes on you. We thank you, God, that you would uplift our hearts, stir our hearts. And as we together gather this morning in different houses across the city, not just the city, but in, on different computers and different screens across the world. Father, we pray that you would do what you do best. Would you inspire us? Would you encourage us? And Lord, would you lift up our eyes to see who you are? We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Family and friends, for those of you who had any celebrations or birthdays over this holiday period, we celebrate you. Um, we pray that God's favor will, be, will shine upon your life. And also then we want to extend those of you who've been sick and recovered. We thank God and we praise God with you that you recovered well. For those of you who've lost family members and friends, our hearts go out to you. We really, I mean, stand with you. Um, we pray that the God of peace will comfort your hearts. And we're really sorry for your loss. Uh, your loss is also our loss as a family. For those of you who are sick, we're going to pray for you today that God will really put His healing hand upon your life and that you would recover quickly. Father, we thank you for those who are sick. Right now in faith, I extend my hand to them in faith. And we ask you, God, that you would touch those who need healing. In the name of Jesus, be healed right now. As we preach, as we speak, as we pray, that they will experience your healing power in Jesus' name. Lord, for those who need a miracle financially, business-wise, we pray, Father, for your sovereign hand, your sovereign provision, your sovereign protection. And we thank you, Father, that we can ask of you, the God of the universe, the Almighty God, Father, to intervene. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. Family and friends, our hearts are with you. And we know this is a very, again, difficult time in the sense of that we're back on, on screen, we're back on Zoom meetings, and, you know, here you're sitting listening to an online message. And we don't choose times, you know, we don't choose what happens around us. But what we can choose is how we react towards it, how we act in the seasons like this. And I want to encourage you, you know, leading in a season like this, I would much more prefer to see you face to face. We as leadership would much more prefer to be meeting back in our, you know, venues. But at this stage, you know, this is not allowed. And we know that there are different theories out there and different, you know, ways that people want to approach it and different opinions out there. But we as a leadership, you know, um, have felt that we need to submit to God and also submit to the governing authorities that God has placed over us in the season. And we ask you that you would do the same. 
But with what we can do in this season is we can lift up our hearts. We can lift up our eyes and we can respond with a positivity that you and I, the same principles, even if it's locked down, even if you're listening over a screen today, you're listening over your TVs today, still the same principles apply. The Bible says do not neglect the gathering of the saints. I believe this is no reason for us to neglect, you know, getting input, neglect listening and gathering together around the Word of God and allow the Word of God to uplift our hearts. You'll benefit more from listening to the Word of God than neglecting these moments and do whatever. So we want to encourage you that we apply the same principles, even if it's a little bit on different, on different platforms and different ways we do things, we're serving the same God. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for faithfully serving God. And also in this season that you faithfully will reach out to people around us as the world is in desperate need. And we have the good news, the gospel that can save people's lives. We are knocking off this year and the season with this new series called Awesome God. And I'm going to start this morning specifically, Awesome God, Jehovah, my Lord. We're looking at the book of Exodus and the book of Exodus is a incredible book as it is a book that was written specifically to the nation of Israel where God is seeking a relationship with the people of Israel. He's inviting them close, but also inviting them close into relationship is a danger because God cannot allow sin. God is a holy God. And by default, if we bring sin into the relationship, it endangers us. And therefore, God also protects people by keeping them sometimes at a distance. And inviting them close to relationship is God's desire. But God also is in calling us and is enabling us through His grace that we also need to seek to live holy. In this book of Exodus, you find a theme right through the book of redemption and salvation. And that actually becomes the pattern throughout the whole Bible, how God redeems and saves His people throughout Scripture. This book is also used as a, to edif for edification and also to educate the people of God how to enter into the promised land. Now, how much more timely is this book? If you think about all of us sitting here in lockdown, but there is a promised land. There are promises God has given us. And those promises are yes and amen. Friends, the fact that we're in lockdown does not mean that everything has stopped. Does not mean that the dreams and appliance that God has for us has stopped. Lockdown and the virus and the epidemic we face internationally does not limit our God. It does not stop God from fulfilling His plans on earth. In fact, you will see when we look back one day that even the very stuff, the things that we go through on earth, God sovereignly was still in charge and in control over all of it. And you and I, I hope this morning as we share this message, this will uplift your heart. You look at Moses and God is calling Moses to deliver a message to the nation of Israel. But keep in mind, they were encamped on the plains of Moab in the valley and none of them had any military training. They were not equipped for this moment and for the season. Although they faced fierce militaristic tribes, that, I mean, with a, a major reputation for violence and brutality. The nation of Israel was not prepared for this moment. The nation of Israel was not equipped for this moment. And they knew and God knew that if God did not intervene, if God did not step in, they will not make it. They will suffer loss. They will be slaughtered. Their wives will be raped. And their children will be sold off in slavery. They needed God. It sounds a little bit more like what we need now. It's COVID. A lot of us know the limitations and feel the limitations. But God is not limited. We serve a supernatural God that is not locked down. He is not, he's not limited to time and space and the epidemics and the things we face. And as we put our eyes on Him, He can deliver us. See friends, Moses had to bring a message to a people who have been in bondage for 400 years. What kind of message, what kind of hope can it bring that would lift up their hearts and give them hope that they will be led out of this moment? Let's turn our eyes to the Bible in Exodus 3 verse 1 to 15. Let's read through. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. And he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked and behold, 
A bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight. Why the bush is not burned? When the Lord saw that um, he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. And then he said, do not come near. Take, off, take your sandals off your feet. For the place on which you st are standing is holy ground. And he said, I'm the God of your father, the God of Abram, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I've surely seen the afflictions of my people who are in Egypt, and I've heard their cry because of the, their taskmasters. I know their suffering, and I've come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Pezites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me. And I've also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may um, bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, But I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you, that I send you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your father has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. And God also said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel, The Lord, the God, your father, the God of Abram, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this I am to be remembered throughout all generations. We read from Exodus 3, you know, this amazing chapter about a demonstration of God's desire to deliver His people. Why did God come from heaven? You see, you need to understand that the Lord appeared to him. It's God appearing to Moses. It was not on Moses' appeal or request or even the people's appeal or request. It's God coming to the people. God's desire is shown by His appearance that He wants to deliver His people. God called out to Moses from the bush. Moses was not seeking God. I mean, the angel of God called Moses to come to the bush because God wanted to meet with Moses. It's God introducing Himself to Moses. We need to see the sovereign hand of God, the sovereign response of God, that the God we serve cares about us. The God we serve, He comes to us. He appears to us. Even the very message of salvation, God Jesus left heaven, came to earth to seek and save the lost. It's God coming to us, friends. It's not so much how much must we do to actually get God's attention. Let me tell you, God's attention is already on you. God's attention is already on us. And then it goes on and says, I've surely seen the afflictions of my people. God is not blind. God knows what you're going through. God knows what you're facing. God knows what we are facing. God sees the affliction of His people because He's a God of His people. That's why God appeared. His desire was and His care was for His people. His desire is to have a relationship with His people. His desire is for you. His desire is to have a relationship with you. In 2021, God wants to have a relationship with you in person. And that is what settles our hearts. That's what gives us everlasting peace is when you and I walk in a healthy relationship with God. I've come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. It's on God's initiative that He wants to deliver His people. Why? Take note. Everything, and there's no record here that the people of God were actually appealing to God. Yes, God heard their cries. Yes, God saw their oppression. But it's not that the people were seeking God and asking God to come. It's God Himself on His own initiative, out of His own love, responding to His people. Why? Because He's a covenantal God. He's a God who made a covenant with Abram. And that very same covenant, He sustains. 
He responds to His covenant. He keeps His covenant in place. Nothing that happens to us on earth will take God to actually not fulfill His covenant. Even in this very moment, in 2021, He's still a covenantal God and He will fulfill His covenant. He will fulfill His promises. Nothing can change that. That's why God responded. You see, if you look at God as the deliverer, how will God deliver them? It's amazing what God did here. He says, come, I will send you, Moses, to Pharaoh. The way that God many times chooses to deliver, deliver people, He chooses frail people like me, like you. He chooses incom- incapable people. He chooses, you know, the down and out. He chooses people who are limited. He chooses people like Moses who are in fear and trembling. and says, why me? Why do you want to send me to Pharaoh? I mean, these people have been in bondage by this mighty ruler for so many years. And now you want to send me to deliver them? Friends, God wants to use you. God wants to use me. God wants to use us in times like this, not because of our ability, but because we understand who God is. This awesome God. Who is He? See, you knowing who God is, is critical in this season that you would be able to serve God, respond to God, and that you would be able to become an instrument through which God can use you to deliver other people. Who am I that you should send me? Moses rightfully doubted himself. See, friends, whenever we are overconfident in our own abilities and, and our skills, and, and the amazing thing about what's happened in the world, the proud mouth has been shut. Every human effort and every human ability has come to a limitation, and the limitations has been shown. But God Almighty is not limited. And I want to encourage you in this season that you would lift up your eyes to the unlimited unending God. He is still God awesome. Awesome God with no limitations. These people were in bondage for 400 years. What is this exact word that Moses can use to help to deliver these people? I mean, Jesus said, I will be with you. Who is this I that will be with you? See, it's amazing that we go into partnership, but it's always important that you understand who's your partner. Who is the I in the package? Who's the I that says, I will be with you? If you look at society today, there are so many movies out there that you know, focus on superheroes from Catwoman to Superman to all these superhumans or superhuman abilities or, or human beings that have these superhuman abilities portrayed in these movies because we all are looking for a savior. We all are looking for somebody to deliver us. Who is this I? I will be with you. You see, knowing the I in your life changes the sin I into victorious. It changes the me, limited me, into a conqueror. It changes the limited sinful me into a victorious, gracious child of God who can live victorious victorious from sin and also can be in the midst of this epidemic. We can be a people of solution, not part of the problem. We can be the people who bring, inspire people. And we, can, we are the people of God. We are the church of God that the world is awaiting for the demonstration of God's power in the season. But we need to know the I. Who is this I? Who will deliver them? And Moses asked Jesus, he asked God this incredible question. Not that he doesn't know God. He says, If I go to your people, it's almost like if it's an option. What is his name? Who do I say is sending me? What is the name by which I introduce you, God, to them so that they will trust me? Now, friends, this is a critical moment. Because, I mean, there are many names of God that we read in the Bible. There's God the the deliverer. There's God the mighty force. I mean, there's God our banner. There's God our healer. There's God our provider. There are so many incredible names. And I would think personally, one of the names that would be most suited for this situation is God Almighty, the Deliverer. Because He's going to deliver them. But let's look at it. You see, a name has got three major things. You know, I'm Philip Pretorius. Now, Pretorius obviously is not French. Our names distinguish us from others. My name is Philip. At this moment, Vian is recording me. That distinguishes us. Our names gives us a little bit of information of our origin, where we come from. And our names also sometimes define us which generation we were born of, you know, and and, and part of. 
Because if you look at back in the day, some people called sky and, you know, dusk. That means that was part of the hippie era. See, friends, our names are linked to all other characteristics of ourselves. And the same with God. If I say Jonathan, what are the other names? Jonathan Atkins. I mean, it could be different Jonathans. If I say Tiff Berger, some of you know them. You will link immediately other names to them. If I say Trump, if I say Hitler, if I say Bill Gates, any name I use immediately links those people with other names. The same with God. You see, it's important that we understand who is this God that we serve. Moses wanted to know, by which name do I go and deliver the people? You are with me, but who are you? And here's God's response. God said to Moses, I am who I am. What a response. Say to the people, I am has sent me to you. Think about this. I am. What name is that? How do you distinguish this name? How do you define? I mean, what do you mean by I am? You see, this is an important moment because this moment God is actually laying a foundation for generations to come. Distinguish, I am. Yes, it's very distinguished from all names on the face of the earth. I am whatever and whoever I called, I, I decide to be. I am a sovereign God. I decide who I am, when I am that, and when I'm going to be that, what I will be in the future, what I have been in the past. I am who I am. Origin, I'm forever, never ending, the eternal God. I am living outside of time and space. Generation, I am not linked to a generation. I am from generation to generation. Even your children's children, I'll be their God when you are no longer here. See, friends, that's why it's important that we lay foundation in our children's lives of who God is. Because when we are no longer there, they will then build on the same God who's there forever. I am what I define to be. I am who I am. Trust me. We cannot define God. See, here's the problem. The moment we start to define God, it's correct to say God is the deliverer or the healer. But here's the problem. When we only serve an aspect of God, not only do we limit our thinking and our understanding and our belief of who God is, we even put God in a box. And if we start to choose aspects of God's name, I like the healer. I don't like the teacher. I like the God who saves me, but I don't like the God who sanctifies me. When we start to take the names of God like a puzzle and we choose which names we really prefer, we don't serve God anymore. We serve God out of preference. And this new God we create is not God. Because God says, I am self-defined. You don't define me. You don't determine who I am. You don't serve me out of preference. You serve me out of who I am. And if you know who I am and you let me be who I am, I do what I do when I want to do it, how I want to do it, and because I am. When we allow God to be who He is, we will find a place of peace where we don't have to tell God what He needs to do. We don't have to manipulate God to do things. We can find a place of rest and trust God that He is who He is. Let's serve this God. You see, it goes on, it says, and God said to um, Moses, say this to the people of Israel, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abram, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. Um, and this I am to be remembered throughout all generations. See, the powerful passage says, it's not just my name now, Moses, as you deliver the people. This is my name forever. I am that I am. I am who I am. No one described me. We, pre we don't prescribe, we describe. We don't prefer, we differ and believe. We don't manipulate, we trust and follow. We allow God to be God in our lives. If the great I am is the God in our lives, that great I am will be great. That awesome God will be awesome in your life right now, right here, this year. Allow the great I am to fill your minds. Allow the great I am to fill your hearts. Allow the great I am to bring hope where you need hope. Let God be God and we will find a place of peace. This God that we serve is Jehovah, my Lord. The Lord is with us. The Lord is with you. Let's submit to His Lordship. 
Let's allow God to be God in our lives. Let's lift up our eyes. He is the keeper of his covenant. We need to be the people who submit to the keeper of the covenant. We need to be the people who submit to God, the great I am. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that the whole earth is sustained by you, that your covenant is sustained by you, that you are the keeper of your covenant and that you are a covenantal God. Despite of our limitations, despite of our weaknesses, and despite of whatever happens in the world, you are still the great I am. And Father, today we're not back in Egypt and we're not the nation of Israel back in Egypt, but we are your people in need of deliverance. We are your people in need of hope in our hearts. And Father, I pray as we pray this today, that every person hearing this message, Father, will lift up their eyes, looking at the great I am, our deliverer, our loving God. And in the midst of it, Lord, do what you want to do. Father, even if it's locked down, doesn't matter. We're looking at screens. Doesn't matter what platform we are, you know, using and, and to, to deliver the message and what kind of limitations we have. In the midst of it, help us to honor you. In the midst of it, help us to put our eyes on you, the great I am, and still serve you faithfully without excuse. Father, we bless every person. We thank you that you inspire them. We thank you that you lift them up and that you comfort every person that needs comfort. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. People, we love you. We pray for you. We want to encourage you. Get back into your connect groups. Let's meet together as far as we can across the city in our connect groups. And let's allow our spiritual family to encourage one another as we all lift up our eyes to the great I Am. He is Jehovah, your Lord, my Lord. He is with you. God bless you.